Welcome back to the next video in the series where we're going to be looking at step four of the assignment. So let's quickly go and look at the assignment and we can see that step four is to extend your basic server to recognize this sync and source protocol requests and then test this with the telnet command. So we can go and look at the protocol and read about the extended protocol requests for sync and source. So here for the sync request it sends a sync command and then any other traffic is discarded to the end of the connection. The source command uh, just tells the server to generate any output and here's the response from the server. So the server will either drop the connection at the end of the sync having sent nothing or if it's a source it will send all of the characters in a cycle over and over. Right, so we can go back to uh, Visual Studio. This is what we had from the client. So we can go back to what we had from the server from step two. So we can open that in Visual Studio. And here is the source that we have from the server. So we can tell Visual FSVN that we're planning to, uh, to uh, make an update for this now and we can go and look at adding that. So here we're doing the request and now one of the commands that we wish to add can, it's quite simple now that we've got a lot of the structure there we can just add the commands source can add the command the section for sync. So we need to add some code to do those things. So this sync is probably the easiest. So for the sync we just have to accept whatever input we're given and do nothing else. So that's probably, you can just use the stream reader and we can do read to end. So we can just do all the reading we want to do and then we just drop out the bottom. So that's quite simple. So the source one is going to be more difficult. So when we've got the source, we need to send some output until we're interrupted. So very likely it's going to be interrupted because we have to keep working until interrupted. So we've probably got to put some kind of try catch structure in there. And then it's inside the try we've got to write things forever. Now we ought to follow our professional approach and put some comments. So we can here is we can put read input until the end of connection. And here we can put a comment. So what we want to do is display characters 33 to 126. That's actually what's specified in the spec. And we want to do that forever. And the way we write a forever loop is for something. So that's a loop forever. And on each line, we want 72 characters. So we can have like an in C which counts. And 
so we can do it for C less than or equal to 72 and then we want to add 1 a capital C and we want a little c I put a comment says loop forever until interrupted and here I would have a comment that says put 72 characters per line so after we've done the 72 characters we could do SW right line and the SW flash and perhaps send that line through so we've just got to write each uh, character so we probably if we just have a counter that says where we are so we start it off at 33 and so we take that character that integer 33 and we can make a character we can make the ASCII value is making a char out of the character uh, value something like that and the plus plus says add one to it after you've taken its value so that's asking the ASCII value of 33 and that will add one to that so then we could just write that out So we start at 33, we add 1 as we go around, printing out all of the characters. What this has to do is stop. So we just have to make sure that if the character value gets to the biggest one that we want, which is 126, so greater than 126, we set the character value back to 33. So it goes back to the beginning. So it goes round and round, doing those characters from 33 to 126. It puts 72 per line and flushes that through. It expects to be interrupted. If it's interrupted, it catches that interruption and doesn't do anything. So that's some very simple code we've done to implement the spec. Um, so I can then just put another comment here. Interrupted. Continue with next request. So we've got most of the features uh, now we need in our server. Let's go back and look at the specification. You can see here it says from decimal thirty-three until decimal one two six. The line should be exactly 72 characters wide and it should look like this. We've got the timeout in there. So we've got nearly everything uh, that we need in our server here. So first I can check that this builds. So I can build the solution. So our build has succeeded. I can commit these changes to SVN.
and then we can test this with Telnet. So we can go to the window and we're in the server binary here. So we can uh, either start running the server there or I can press the run button here and we go to the server window. And in here is it says we, we can test with Telnet. So we Telnet local host port 43 and see we've connected. So if we type sync, now it says something went wrong. That's because we have to type really quickly in one second. So I'll type faster. And you notice it's swallowing up everything that I'm sending. And, and then it, uh, it times out on me in one second. But it swallowed up all of that input. So that appears to work. Now, if I type quickly, I can test the source. I can type source. And now you can see it's sending output very, very quickly. Um, and I can interrupt it with control square bracket. And I can close the connection, quit. And the server should be ready to receive another connection. How, now, now I've closed it. So I can go in and type sync. And you see it closed it down. So it's accepted the source and the sync and it's working. Lastly, we could run the supplied laboratory test script to test it interacts with the other software. So we can do t colon step four test which will run our test of step 4 and, and check that it's all working properly and it's currently using our server we left running on port 43 it's tested the sync works on one line and two lines it tests the source works and then it says would you like to try a little bit more or large number so I can go well try testing it on 5000 line chunks and uh, yep it generates or absorbs 5,000 line chunks. So the test script is very happy. So we know that that's finished. So we've, we can see now we've got the main infrastructure there adding further commands to it is quite good. We can do some external testing. We've got our logging. So quite a lot of the server is done. So that completes all we need for step four, much quicker than the earlier steps because we've already got, got things in place. So we've got to do step five, which uh, is the next one. So come back shortly and uh, we'll have a video for step five. Thank you very much.